The following program is being brought to you on the Seventh Wave Network. For more information about our network and to check our additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit SeventhWaveNetwork.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit VoiceAmerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome. It's time for Expansion. It's time for vibrational attunement and channeled messages with the mothers. This is Conscious Conversations with Angela Blaha. In our program today, you will learn about new states of consciousness and seek unity within yourself. Now, here is your host, Angela Blaha. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for listening in today. I'm Angela Blaha and I am so excited to have Justin Elledge with me today. He's also known as the human MRI. Um, Justin is a medical intuitive and today we are consciously discussing the biomechanics of the healing needs of the human anatomy. So this is a really important topic um, for me and for many of you probably as um, a lot of our clients, both Justin and my clients, um, are experiencing physical illnesses. So welcome and thank you, Justin, for joining us today. I am so happy to be here, Angela. And again, thank you for the invitation to join you live. Great. You're so exciting. I just love um, your abilities to like go within the body and to understand really what's happening at a uh, you know emotional, physical, and spiritual level. So well, I'm just so you. Yeah, good. All right, so um, when did you first experience your ability to, um, for your, with your healing gifts of going inside the body? Well, for me, it, it actually came fairly late um, in life. I've, I've heard of many intuitives and individuals that are called to this work when they're very young. Though I had certain um, energetic experiences when I was like four or five, myself and my family had no reference point and it was just considered whatever, um, mm-hmm. just um, out of the norm, if you will. In fact, um, the first experience that I recall, I was the lights had just gone off in my room, and I was probably five or six, and I had this image of all these snakes writhing against one wall, kind of like, you know, after the lights go out, you have that kind of after image. But right. this was very different because it was like the entire wall was lit up. And this, I was scared. I, at six, I didn't know what to explain. This is, and I called. My dad came in and turned the lights on and said, oh, everything's fine, son. There's no snakes in here. And uh, him being a military officer, he'd seen a lot in his life, but he had no understanding of what was going on at that time. And that, uh, you know, he turned the lights off, and the, the energy of the snakes, this, this field, showed up again. And he basically convinced me it would be okay and everything's fine. And I went back to sleep that night and just put it out of my mind. So many, many years later, that was, um, it'll be 11 years next month, I was at a retreat on Course in Miracles here in the local mountains. And a friend of mine, big, burly construction worker, had been laying on the floor. And a gentleman had been doing some, like, chiropractor moves to kind of twist and tweak his neck and back. And uh, he was still in pain, which I was aware of. I knew he had something going on in his shoulders. So he was laying on the floor, so I knelt down next to him, and I put my hands above him to do some energy work. And as I closed my eyes, a very distinct image of a broken rib popped into my head. Mm -hmm. Now, being a nurse and trained in anatomy and physiology, I had an idea of what a broken rib looked like. And so with that, I pulled my hands away from him. I had not touched him yet, and I just pulled my hands away, and I said, where exactly are you feeling the pain? And he indicated his lower right side, and I said, you, my friend, have a broken rib. And everybody was standing around watching all this, just the room went completely quiet because they had observed him being adjusted and twisted, and and they all kind of like, oh, that's bad. (laughs) So (laughs) ever since that moment, and this was Easter Sunday, Easter weekend, uh, 2005, this ability came in literally just like that. 
Um, I am still in awe of the process and am very honored to do this work. And I think the universe knew something I didn't or wasn't quite prepared for. But so we think you're ready. And that's when it came in. So I say for everyone that has these latent skills, it's simply being open to allowing them in and going towards that goal of bringing them into bear. There are a lot of people that sing well in the shower but never think about singing in public. And there's a lot of people that sing really well, but they sing without heart, if that makes sense. Yes, totally. Yeah. You know, I want to go back to your experience with the snakes as when I was younger, like I had a lot of experiences with snakes as well, like on the same premise. And every once in a while when something, um, you know, a new ability sort of starts to come in, like I get that same presence. So I'm just kind of wondering like what the synchronicity is of snakes maybe, (laughs) or maybe there's nothing, but it seems like there's something. Well, I, I think in our culture in the West here, we think of snakes. However, Eastern culture, we'd be thinking of dragons. Right. And so the energy, when I say the difference of snake, we have the biblical application of Adam and Eve and the negativity of the snake. Mm-hmm. But when we think of dragons, we think of animals of power. We think of uh, divine beings who ride dragons. And it's a sense of empowerment that is not associated with the snake or the vision of the snake. We also go back thousands of years, the image of the caduceus. It's that the two snakes intertwining, which are actually representation of the DNA strands. But right. we didn't know that less than 100 years ago. So as I've now been introduced to dragon energy, amongst other things that have happened in the last year, I have come to appreciate these ethereal creatures, though I have met a few people that can actually see dragons, much as other people see auras or energies, and it's fascinating. I can't do that, but I know that simply remembering that time and place um, when I was a kid and the difference of it, had my father had been into metaphysics or something, it might have been a different outcome, and I may have been doing this work a lot sooner. However, I'm very glad that it showed up as it did And as I have opened up to these energies, as I have opened up to the work of Master Yu, who was a living um, Buddha, who was empowering myself and other students and disciples, I saw him actually um, take an empty vase one day, an empty uh, silver vase, tapped it three times. He said some uh, mantras, and he was able to pour water out of it. Very high-level work. I saw him actually help heal a boy that uh, was deaf, and other things, and because of that lineage, which goes back 2,500 years, being accepting uh, refuge with this master while he was still alive, helped bring all of this forward. So it wasn't, mm-hmm. I think, just the one event, but that was the, the moment uh, 11 years ago when it clicked and everything fell into place. Sometimes I call it the cosmic Rubik's Cube. <laughs> yeah. So snakes are nothing to be feared. It's just an opening of some... Um you know, spiritual awareness trying to sort of uh, come in to our awareness, right? So they, yeah, they sort of, they they sort of, right? So I feel like they sort of present themselves in bigger than life or maybe things that sort of invoke a little bit of fear in us so that we pay attention. Well, very much so. Um, you know, so many animals come into our lives that to get our attention, and we just think it's just a part of nature. Um, in my teenage years, I had the great honor of having a hawk, a red-tailed hawk that lived about, oh, 100 yards outside my back window. And in the morning, I would get up and, you know, time to go to school, but I would look out and I would see this hawk staring back. And uh, I just thought that was really cool. And years, years later, I went mountain climbing uh, with a friend who introduced me to the sport. And we came back, we came down around the hill and in this uh, sagebrush area, as I come around, I'm, we're making noise, I'm talking, and I turn into this little alcove of trees, and there's this huge hawk just sitting on a branch, not more than 15 feet from me. And he looks at me, I look at him, we had this moment, and then he just gently spread his wings, it's like, okay, you get it now? And he took off. <laughs> and it was, again, another totem, another animal, another energy, as I get goosebumps relating this, right. that there's animals that are aware And because they don't have the predisposition of thinking, 
they mm-hmm. have awareness because they're living in the world. They are physically grounded to earth. They watch the sunrise every morning. They watch the sunset every day. And they're much more connected to the universe than you and I will ever be. And they also recognize their own missions and connections and our guides and angels that are working behind the scenes to help us wake up. And that's mm-hmm. really what my story is about, is waking up to the work, to the world, to this intuition every day. Every day it's about reconnecting. When I, first thing I do in the morning, I say my meditations and prayers because as the sun is rising, it's a new day, a new beginning. And so for me, it's a new connection. Right. Well, the animal kingdom, the fish kingdom, the bird kingdom, they're all vibrationally attuned to, you know, everything and anything, which we are sort of hoping moving into, but, you know, we're a little bit slow at the process and they are already automatically attuned. Well, indeed. And and it's that connection that we can all do. One of the great things that um, I like to share with my clients, and I may have shared this with you, is what we call grounding. Now, in the last few years, there have been several books written on the subject of earthing and grounding. Mm -hmm. And in my work as a medical intuitive, I really like to keep it simple. That is there meditations and things a person can do? Absolutely. But sometimes it's just the physical things that we can go out and do in the world that can make a huge difference in our lives. And so I will share this, um, which is something that I think is sacred as well as physically healing. And that's where we physically get grounded to the earth. Now, some people think about sitting in lotus position in a yoga class or meditation group and seeing themselves grounded to the earth, which is wonderful because it helps our brain focus. And to do that as the ancients did, to be physically sitting on the ground somewhere or physically touching the earth Mm -hmm. with bare feet or bare hands is grounding us to this amazing world and planet physically. And the minute we ground physically, our blood pressure our white blood count, our immune system starts relaxing. And all of the electromagnetic tension, all the stuff from outer space as well as here on Earth, all the radio towers, EMF, cell phone towers, have no effect on us as long as we remain grounded. The minute we put on our shoes or walk into a house that has hardwood floors, we start acting as a capacitor. And these energies of the universe start charging us up and start affecting our health. Before the turn of the century and electricity was everywhere, people never considered this, but most people wore leather shoes, and if variation, very few wore socks. And just the sweat of their feet going through those leather shoes would ground them to the earth, which is one of the reasons why our recent ancestors were so much sturdier than we are today. And to take this up another notch, to make it sacred, one of the greatest ways I know to bring in divine energy, to bring in spirit, to bring in God, to bring in the energies of the angels, is to be grounding oneself and at the same time engage with viewing or watching the sun. Mm -hmm. And so when we ground ourselves and we look to the sky, again, that sun is coming up in the morning, it's a new day, and the angels are coming in on those wings of gossamer light as a new day is created, but to be at a place ideally early in the morning, not necessarily during a snowstorm, (laughs) but to be able to physically see the sun come over the horizon at the distance, not up over a house or a hill or a a mountain, but to see it more across the plains like on the ocean or a lake, somewhere you can Mm -hmm. see the sun as it rises. For those first 10 minutes, there's not enough UV rays to hurt our eyes. However, the light and color and frequencies of the sun and amongst all its glory, is supercharging our limbic system, supercharging our immune system. And as, as we're grounding at the same time, that energy is flooding through our system and we're washing away all the detriment, all the negative energy, literally electrical charges, electrical fields, and anything else that we may have picked up during the night in our insulated bed off the floor to release it onto the planet, to let it go. And by doing that, I know when I get up and get the sun and get to, I am so much more energized. I mean, physically, I have more energy to carry myself forward. It's like taking a dozen capsules of coenzyme Q10 and, and uh, you know, some of the other, I don't want to even say coffee, but you get the idea. 
Right. So vibrational alignment first thing in the morning is like huge. So we're going to take a little bit of a break and we'll be right back in a couple of moments. The Voice America 7th Wave Channel. Be extraordinary. Be the change. In Angela's book, Show Me How to Remember Your Power Through Self-Love and Forgiveness, you'll find an empowering book filled with messages of love and forgiveness. She gives powerful ways to use your own courage, strength, and love to heal your emotional and mental body. You can find the book at Amazon or visit Angela's website at AngelaBlaha.com. The book is available in paperback and Kindle formats. Step back into your power. Get Angela's show me's at AngelaBlaha.com. Sometimes in the busyness of daily living, we can forget who we truly are as spiritual beings with intent and purpose fueling our goals and dreams. Remembering begins with navigating belief structures, family or cultural expectations and history so we can find our way. Listen in to Timeshare with host Marie Jackson. Marie and her regular contributors discuss life's questions, challenges, obstacles, and rewards, all bringing us to the spirit of who we are. Timeshare with Marie Jackson can be heard live every Thursday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific Time on 7th Wave. The Voice America 7th Wave Channel. You are listening to Conscious Conversations. To connect with Angela Blaha or her guest today, please call into the program at 1-866-472-5795. That's 1-866-472-5795. You may also send an email to AngelaBlaha005 at gmail.com. Now, back to Conscious Conversations. Welcome back, everyone, and we're here with Justin, the human MRI. Justin, how does your process work? How do you connect with and see and feel and, and uh, you know, just instantly know um, what's happening with individuals? Well, I think going back to that first moment, I will, I will suggest to the audience that what is it like when they're hungry and they're looking at a menu? and they'll scan over all the things that are on the menu of the restaurant, and all of a sudden something goes, click, this is what I want. And so in that sense, it's very instantaneous mm. when I have a session with a client, and sometimes it just happens when I'm um, in a group of people or I'll be somewhere, and someone, uh, someone's guide will tap me on the shoulder and said, I need to get this message to someone. And this happens quite a lot. That sense of intuition is... I get quiet, and because of that moment up on the mountain at the retreat, I was in that perfect moment of silence. So I wasn't thinking about anything. I just wanted to help the individual, Ananda, laying on the floor with whatever pain he was. And in that moment, I closed my eyes and got quiet. I think I hit that point of zero-point energy or just silence, whatever one would call it. But it was so clear to me of how to get there that has stayed with me every day since. And so uh, in, in the Buddhist tradition or Hindu or Christian faith, it's always about meditation. And in that work, it's about becoming silent or quiet. And so much of our lives seem to be dedicated now to find silence in our day-to-day. So as I close my eyes, whether I'm on a phone session like I would be right now or I have a client sitting across from me in the same room, I tend to close my eyes and be, go to that quiet place, and that's when the images start flooding into my head. And unlike being a clairaudient who is an intuitive or psychic that hears a voice speaking, I tend to be a very clair, 
I guess it would be visual, whatever color visual is. Um, so I close my eyes and I see the image of what the, the guides, the angels, are trying to project to me to understand. During uh, the break, we were having a conversation. I had this image of you. Um, I saw a woman and a child trying to be picked up by the woman, and I was asking about if there's any uh, kids or grandkids around, and you said no, and then the interpretation was literally, oh, it's the mother energy. So the image that came in, they were trying to describe to me the mother energy, and this is where your program and guidance comes from, if I understand it correctly. So it's really being quiet, and it's basically like having a chalkboard in my head that I clear away so that nothing's there and the images are projected. And then it's through those images that I understand to share with my client what's happening. Now, again, I think this is something that everyone can learn. However, with my own skill set, uh, I've had my own health challenges for over 40 years. I've been a nurse now for 25 years, which means that you know I had to study anatomy and physiology. I've done many other things in the world of engineering, design. I've done steel fabrication, welding, woodworking, model making. Uh, I've had an amazing background of all the different things that I've done with hands-on work. So I understand how things go together on several different layers. And so with this connection of intuition, it has opened up a huge field for me to understand what is helpful for others. When I was teaching at a local college, it got to the point a student could walk up and before they even told me what they needed, I could just scan them and tell them all the things they needed to do for their project they needed to construct. And they would just stand there with their jaw open and said, how do you know this? It's like, I've been doing this a long time. And it was actually that training, that being open to it. And this is the biggest secret of the universe, is being open. Right. If our planet was covered in a great shroud and cloud of metal and stone, the energy of the universe couldn't get through. Right. And so each of us tend to close ourselves off because of our beliefs and conditionings that came from our childhood and our family wanting us to be happy and healthy in the mode or the menu or the venue of what that family thought was normal. Now, this could have been an Amish, it could have been um, Aganasi, it could have been whatever area or belief pattern that the parents feel is correct for the child. But it's about going beyond the conditioning of our culture and to go to that place of really simply being open to the possibility that there's something greater than ourselves. Right. That's that's a huge, huge awareness is just being open, right? And the other component that you had talked about is the silence, moving into silence so that we can actually hear ourselves opening or even being aware that we're open to, you know, all the innate abilities that we already have. So moving into the silence, I'm, silence is one of the most important things I feel as we move into energies of healing ourselves or even knowing, you know, what's what's wrong with the physical body or the emotional body or even the spiritual bodies if we're not connected. Um, how does that play into, like, I know you've experienced, you know, an illness yourself recently. And so how does that play into um, your own ability to heal yourself? Well, in some um, belief systems or uh, religious systems, one is only have to pray to heal everything. If we just pray mm-hmm. well enough or we just pray hard enough and we just believe the right link from A to God or from our right. illness to God, it'll magically click and fix itself. Right. And there are people that That's... can do that. And so in my mindset is that being open to getting the insight as to what will help the person heal. And sometimes it's, it's penicillin. And at other times, it's take a vacation. Mm -hmm. And so for me, during the last, I had one of the last, at at the first two weeks of March, I had the worst flu of my entire life. And you can imagine all the resources and chemicals and potions and apothecaries, uh, homeopathic remedies. I was throwing everything at this, and nothing was sticking. Mm -hmm. And I just kept, every day I woke up thinking, I'm glad to be alive. And so I kept trying to find the energy just to get to the point of being quiet and meditate. And during that two-week period, I put it out to God. And Spirit is like, if you want to bring me home, good a time as any. 
but if we have something greater to do here, let's go to it. And within 24 hours, I actually connected to a friend um, who manufactures a material called Double Helix Water, which I have on my website. Mm -hmm. And he suggested another material that's a type of water that's infused with colloidal silver and oxygen, which I've never Mm -hmm. heard of. And so sure enough, I resonated with that. And so I ordered it from the source, and I started taking it. Within 24 hours, I was feeling better. Within 48 hours, I was turning somersault. Wow. And so, again, being open, right? rather than going to the doctor and getting a shot or taking antibiotics, I felt, no, there's another path. I had a client here just on Friday, and this individual um, is dealing with cancer. That's a big issue for many, many people. Now, it was mm-hmm. a very unusual type of cancer. And so as I was speaking with her, I started describing the five uh, points of alternative cancer treatments that are available that are phenomenally effective. And some of them are very inexpensive, 15 or $20 to thousands of dollars, but still it's something someone could do. And I was describing these different things, and there was just not that resonance with her. And then I happened to pick out a bottle of a material that I will be making available, and it's a type of oil from the red pines in Japan and Korea. And as I mentioned this to her, she got this, and I got this kind of like, boom, this is the material. But what came up through that session was that I saw intuitively where and how she used this that would make all the difference. And so that's what's critical It's not only getting the information, being open to the information, but listening when it comes in. And so I suggested that she take this oil and put it on the nape of her neck, on her armpit, and on her wrist. And these were um, key points for the lymph system to deal with. And by the end of the session, she's in tears, and I'm happy for her. But it just feels like this is the material. And it was so fortunate that I could actually show her some that I happen to have some sitting on my table. And that's the blessing of this great world of ours, of being open. One of the more um, things that I I suggest is that if someone really wants to know how open they are, ask yourself how many times you find a parking spot or (laughs) um, how many times when you're driving through town you get a green light. Yeah. (laughs) Right, because that's all within our control, right? I mean, we can make those kind of things manifest. We can make everything manifest. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. And it's the opportunity to get to that place that the universe and the world that we live on is presenting to us. That it, it, I don't want to say this magically happens, but right. like the salmon who are swimming upstream to spawn, when they swim up the stream, they hit many barriers and rocks, and they just can't make the leap because they have the strength, but they have to wait for that moment when the water in the thousands of gallons that are flowing through the stream, in that one moment, the water is not as strong. And that's what they, they wait for. And the moment they get that hit, that the water is not as turbulent or strong, and it's, it's their time to leap, they'll leap forward. And, right. that's and what we're doing to tune in is to listen. And so maybe mm-hmm. you're going to go into town, but something says, maybe we should wait five minutes. And we go, okay, we'll wait five minutes. And then we end up getting that green light and the next green light and the green light to the parking spot in town because we listened to the five minutes. It wasn't about, I'm telling the green lights, I want all green lights from here to town. They're two completely different. One is, my will be done. The other is, thine will be done. And I'll go with God's will any time. Well, exactly. And that's, you know, part of being open and being open to the awareness that that is coming in for you and what your soul's path is and then being you know quiet enough to listen to really what is the direction that that the soul really is desiring for this moment so we're going to take another little bit of a break and then we will be um right back with justin thank you for listening Visionary. This is the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. In Angela's book, 
Show Me How to Remember Your Power Through Self-Love and Forgiveness. You'll find an empowering book filled with messages of love and forgiveness. She gives powerful ways to use your own courage, strength, and love to heal your emotional and mental body. You can find the book at Amazon or visit Angela's website at AngelaBlaha.com. The book is available in paperback and Kindle formats. Step back into your power. Get Angela's show me's at AngelaBlaha.com. Being Here with Ariel and Shia Kane is an ordinary person's guide to modern day enlightenment. This show is an exciting exploration which opens the door to living in the moment. Don't miss being here. Tune in every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern with Ariel and Shia Kane, right here on the Seventh Wave Network. It's time to wake up and transform into your higher self. Tune in to Lighten Radio with host Jay Z Bound. This is a show that's meant for you if you're seeking your highest and fullest potential. It's already within you. All you need to do is discover it and nurture it to reality. Jay-Z is an intuitive and health and ascension facilitator. Get ready to connect to the divine and your authentic self. Be here for Lighten Radio every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. This is the 7th Wave Channel on the Voice America Network. Listening to Conscious Conversations. To connect with Angela Blaha or her guest today, please call into the program at 1 866 472 5795. That's 1 866 472 5795. You may also send an email to Angela Blaha 005 at gmail.com. Now, back to Conscious Conversations. And welcome back. And we're talking with Justin, and we're going to move into um, the discussion about um, Justin. Do you believe, or do you have a um, an understanding of if we manifest? Do we manifest illnesses like your illness? How did it come about? Did you, you know, looking back on it, was there some sort of, you know, cleaning of the body system or some sort of? Um, you know, some sort of spiritual awareness around that? Or, you know, I've been working with the laws of attraction, the law of vibration, the law of resonance uh, frequently lately. And it all seems to come into play when, um, you know, how does it affect our health? How does it affect our our mental capacities? How does it affect our emotions? And, and so much more. Well, this is right. one of those more interesting aspects of the illness. So when I said I had the flu, but I also had two events, three events have to happen all at the same time for me to come down with this particular bug. So this is kind of the series of events. Um, right. Three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I was at a, an event here in Southern California called the Conscious Life Expo, mm-hmm. and which is all kinds of people and celebrities and radio hosts and everybody across the spectrum from metaphysics to angels to um, ancient knowledge, uh, ETs, you you know, everything. And one of the people speaking uh, is a local radio host. And as we were having a conversation, I was in my full Buddhist robes, and I've been doing energy healing for two days. As I ran into her, and uh, we had a great conversation, and as we were parting, we we did this kind of double high five. And the minute we did that, I felt this huge loss and of energy. I mm. felt it's like I, like somebody had just pulled my plug out of the wall, and I just felt myself sink about five feet. And it was like, wow, what was that? But this is not the first time this has happened. So that was kind of like a shock to my system, right. because in the work that I do, and I'm doing healing work and meditation work which was live with individuals coming through the, the uh, event that, you know, obviously they were feeling wonderful and energized. And in, in so many ways, this particular 
lineage goes back 2,500 years and has been handed down uh, teacher to student, master to disciple. And it is incredible. And it's also something that can be taught if anyone would care to learn. And then during the event, um, after this energy drain, I was speaking to someone else at the event and another intuitive, and I said, you know, it just feels like there's a, a, something has fallen over this event that just feels like it's sucking the energy, the, like the life out of it. And she said, I'm so glad you said that because that's what I've been feeling. And so even though I had access to numerous health products, um, I was doing everything I could to be protected, and then some. There was something negatively happening and negatively charged that was literally taking the life force out of everyone. Mm -hmm. And the third thing that happened was here in Los Angeles, it is the worst chemtrail invasion I've seen in years. That it's the first time that I've seen the chemtrails get so thick, it was actually generating fog here on the ground. And so between the energetic event, the negative energetic event, and this soup of chemicals, my body, my immune system was completely overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And I will say this, is that I spoke to a person that was able to analyze the air and around uh, Los Angeles, who also shared with me across the country, is that there's many, many chemicals and biological agents in this chemtrail soup that is affecting each and every one of us somewhat differently. So Mm -hmm. the flip side of this is, is because of the energetics that the trails are creating. It's also helping to create people's belief systems of self-anger, self-hate, and self-hurt, and also self-doubt that we have any mastery or power over our own lives. So during this time of illness, I'm thinking and I'm looking at all this and, and taking all this in and trying to find the way out. And I know many, many people are having colds and flus right now two, three, four weeks long, and many people are literally dying from some of this material. So I'm trying to bring this back around, is that finding my belief about it and the prayers and meditation weren't getting me through it as quickly as I'd like. I then resolved to find that this material I mentioned earlier was a colloidal silver and oxygen uh, mix that finally put my system back online in a big way. I was able to keep the, uh, the lung fields clear, my sinuses clear, so I didn't have all that phlegm and junk because I was using an aerosol of colloidal silver that made a big difference. So these were very down-to-earth materials that were helping me get through the worst of it. Energetically, again, even so, I felt that I had no... Int- it's like I lost my intuition for two weeks, and that's what was really... That actually bothered me more. But then Mm -hmm. I realized is that literally in my world, the big lesson is everything was stripped away that was not important anymore and really got me to understand why am I here. And it's like the boxer in the ring in the ninth round is like you're knocked to the floor and the referee is counting you out, eight, nine, and then at nine and a half, you regain your strength and stand up and are ready to go again. And that's the experience that I got from it. It's like, let's rock. And I have not been this energized. I've been running circles around my wife. I've been eating five (laughs) meals a day. Um, uh, My energy levels are at or above wherever they've been for years. I am so over the moon going forward that I can't even describe. The phone is ringing off the hook. And to really feel at death's door three weeks ago to where I am today is the difference between being in the deepest valley and being on top of Mount Olympus. And it's like nothing's going to stop me. And I also recognize that there is, in my belief set, is there is evil or negativity or not God. Mm -hmm. And recognizing that and releasing that, as in the work of uh, Bruno Gronick, or in the sense of turning it over to our higher power from the 12-step programs, is about letting it go. And so for me to be angry about the chemtrails will not serve me. I'm not happy with it, but I will do the things I can as an individual to keep myself physically safe. To dealing with other people's energies, whether it be positive or negative, it's about me being focused and knowing when and where and how to release or interact with individuals. Um, In that same sense, we were talking about snakes. If you saw a rattlesnake on the ground, you wouldn't necessarily go over and pet it and pick it up. 
Right. But you would give it its respect and distance, knowing that this animal is, you know, good or bad, is that it has its own nature, and we have to respect the nature. So when I hear people that want to put everything about belief as what's causing an illness, is I feel that's an error. Mm-hmm. So that, oh my gosh, I have cancer because I was mean to my kid brother or I didn't get enough attention or love when I was growing up. There is that component because the belief system and cycle that we've brought into ourselves keeps us locked on that merry-go-round. Right. And so to find that issue or belief that's holding us back and releasing it and letting it go is monumental to the healing process. And in the meantime, if you have pneumonia, maybe antibiotics wouldn't be such a bad idea. So <laughs> I, I come from, in, in the work as a medical intuitive, I want a person to be happy and healthy, and I don't care what it takes. Uh, one of the stories of Tom Sawyer by um, Mark Twain, it was like the way to get rid of warts was to uh, go into a graveyard at midnight and swing a cat around your head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now I bring that up as an absurdity <laughs> to get rid of a wart. Um, And so at the same time, in my work, I like to bring stuff very down to earth. This is what I'm suggesting a person do. Now, in that session, and when we were speaking some months ago, I made a suggestion to you to make some crystals and some copper wires and place them together. And then you had, and I'd made suggestions of how to put them into your yard because I had this image of what your yard looked like and how to place them. And you were just sharing with me that you had done that, and then you move them, and that's when you felt the energy shift. Right. Right, and it all comes back back to, you know, being open, right? Mm-hmm. The same with illness as to anything else, our, our emotions, our belief patterns, right? It all comes back to awareness and being open to understanding what they are and what what they're trying to teach us, sort of, and then listening you know, being quiet enough to hear what's happening, being having that huge connection with source and and the universe, right? And then, you know, looking at ourselves and saying, well, what can I release? What do I need to release in order for me to jump into this, you know, cosmic state of being, right? Because it's like once once you release something, it's like so freeing. And I'm sure that lots of people out here who are listening can just totally resonate with what you've been talking about today is that that releasing right when we align with that releasing like magic happens at that point exactly now for one i had a phone call from um, a few years ago on another radio show and that the person called in and said you know i'm having a lot of trouble and before he got to the next word i said stop the first thing you need to do intuitively i i, mm-hmm. I had this image pop into my head of the worst clutter possible that a human could live in and still physically move in a home. And he was saying, oh, things aren't working very well. I said, stop. You have to clean your own house, literally. There's nothing I can share with you that will make a difference until you are willing to clean up your own mess. And you just heard completely dead silence on it. Now, I had not been on the phone with this person more than 15 seconds, but it was just so clear to me. And Mm -hmm. Spirit was talking that you got to clean up your own mess. And once they acknowledge that that was the place to start, yes. then wh- whether that person made a difference, they actually started throwing some trash away or not. But this is some of the fundamentals that have come up through 10 years of doing this, almost 11 years, that sometimes to start that process of gaining God's grace mm-hmm. is also about clearing God's space, which is the one we live in every day. My office has never been this clean, and my wife is just blown away. I cleaned the entire house two days ago, and kitchen floors mopped, dishes put away, vacuumed, and everything else. And my wife's just looking at me and go, who is this man? Where did he come from? And not that I'm not focused on that, but again, I haven't achieved the level of it I have since this flu incident. And again, I'm like, I'm buzzing. So that... If we want to achieve a greater vibration, we have to release the things that hold us back. And believe me, a stack of newspapers, which is very rare today, sitting on the kitchen table from 10 years ago, probably don't need it anymore because we have this wonderful thing called the Internet. (laughs) Probably not. But as humans, we have a tendency to hold on, right? We hold on to so many things that we really don't need. 
Right, and what is that about? Because we want to feel comfortable in our own skin. Uh, why right. do guys like old shirts and old jeans? Because they feel comfortable. They're old friends, and they've been out there. Well, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're going to go uptown, maybe you want to put on a new suit, or at least one that's not 20 years old. Um, but again, it's that vibration of being open mm-hmm. for new things to come in. Exactly. And if our mind, our heart, our spirit, or our home is clogged with junk and bric-a-brac and all this other stuff, let it go. We've been to our aunts or our moms or our cousins or somebody's house, and everything is in its place. And maybe they do have a housekeeper come in, whatever it takes, but it just feels like their life is happening, their life Mm -hmm. is going forward, and they're not necessarily into metaphysics, but they always seem to be ahead of everybody. And that's because they realize they can only keep so much, and they have to let it all go. In the world of email, we get thousands of emails. I cannot delete them fast enough. Right. And so right. metaphysically, metaphorically, we're bombarded with thousands of messages every day. But, you know, if you're keeping your tax returns from 1985, maybe it's time to run it through the shredder. Yeah. Right. Get rid of that stuff. And, it's not useful anymore. Yeah, and so, it's not you. It's not you. It's exactly. not you. And everything that is not you needs to be released. Exactly. So we're going to take another short break, and we'll be right back. The Voice America 7th Wave Channel. Seek greater awareness. In Angela's book, Show Me How to Remember Your Power Through Self-Love and Forgiveness, you'll find an empowering book filled with messages of love and forgiveness. She gives powerful ways to use your own courage, strength, and love to heal your emotional and mental body. You can find the book at Amazon or visit Angela's website at AngelaBlaha.com. The book is available in paperback and Kindle formats. Step back into your power. Get Angela's show me's at AngelaBlaha.com. Sit back. Relax. Breathe. Reconnect to the still, small voice within. Take the time to make a weekly visit to the Sounds of the Heart with host Sandy Goldstone. This unique program will help you cultivate and strengthen your heart's connection and feel love, beauty, and joy. You don't need to fear or suffer. Heed the call. Say yes to living from the heart's truth. Tune in live every Tuesday at 5 p.m. U.S. Pacific Time on the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. Join the evolving consciousness of humanity. This is the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. Listening to Conscious Conversations. To connect with Angela Blaha or her guest today, please call into the program at 1 866 472 5795. That's 1 866 472 5795. You may also send an email to Angela Blaha 005 at gmail.com. Now, back to Conscious Conversations. Welcome back, and we're here with Justin, the human MRI. Justin, what would you um, say to people to help them um, improve their overall health? Oh, my gosh. Well, it's fundamental as this is. Eat organic as often as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, Try to find water that's relatively pure. Uh, Get some fresh air and sunlight, a little bit of exercise. But most importantly, as I was mentioning earlier in this show, is getting grounded. So it's not about working out in a gym, running on a treadmill for hours. It's about walking barefoot on some grass or um, pick up a pair of grounding shoes or earthing shoes that literally have a metallic fiber in them. So as you walk on the ground, it physically, sorry about that, um, it physically um, helps you ground to the earth. And I think that is probably the simplest thing because this is the stuff that our ancestors knew and did and our biology is mm-hmm. geared toward. 
that is how it works, and nothing has changed over the last 10,000 years in that realm that of allowing ourselves to connect and be physically grounded, getting food that's nutritionally grounded, and find a little bit of time, maybe a glass of wine occasionally, and maybe beer or whatever. It's enjoy life and find the joy in it. There is so much negativity that we can choose. Turn on the news at any time of the day, 24-7, and our brains will be bombarded with thousands of images of negativity, which is also part of the bigger picture to keep us in check, to keep us not becoming aware, not to Mm -hmm. go forward. In 1929, during the Roaring Twenties, many things were happening across the world, but also the metaphysical movement was becoming very, very strong, and people were moving towards that. And much like recent years, but with the crash of the stock market, which was intentional and directional, that everybody was so hurt by it, everybody was like, just keep your head down and keep going. And that then took us into a world war. So... Right. What am I saying is about being grounded physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually is finding balance. And keeping those distractions at bay because really that's what they're there to do is to distract us from going inward to listening to the silence, you know, to connecting everything. So do you have a meditation for us? I do, and it would be my great honor. This is one of the meditations that I was taught through my um, Buddhist teachings and that I think everyone will enjoy. So the best part about this is it all you have to do is listen and relax. However, it does involve a mantra. So this is the meditation that I recommend people can do, whether they're at a traffic light or any day, to help bring up one's energy. You can do it first thing in the morning, but don't do it at like 10 o'clock at night or you will be awake for quite a while. Um, and so this is uh, the energy meditation as originally taught by the Maha Varayakana Dharma King Deshan Juran, who is also known as Master Yu. So what I have to get everyone to say, very simply, it's a seven-word syllable, and this is the mantra. And it goes, ah da wa ha a ba la so I'm going to repeat that five times. Again, it's A A H Da D A W A W A Ha, like laughing H A A A H, then the word Ba B A, and then La L A. So it goes A Da Wa Ha A Ba La 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 so to make this work, you have to be saying that quietly to yourself. And while doing and repeating this mantra, now to visualize a membrane within your whole body, which is just under your skin and above your flesh, Imagine it is vibrating. Visualize this layer of membrane is vibrating, vibrating, vibrating. And imagine it is generating an immeasurable chi sensation. Keep practicing the mantra and visualization until you feel your whole body expands and expands and expands into infinity. (sighs) And breathe. And that is the energy meditation. It is very simple. The mantra again is ah, and visualizing a membrane within the whole body just under the skin above the flesh is vibrating, vibrating, vibrating creating a chi sensation which is the energy of the universe of the body of spirit is expanding and expanding and expanding as the whole body expands and expands into infinity. That 
that was every. Go ahead. Go ahead. That was awesome. Wow. Thank you. It's like opening up all the telomeres to receive source or photon light information, <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. this is now going out through the ethers and the internet. And so wherever people hear this, that mm-hmm. if they get this one meditation down, whether they're had a long day, they're at an airport, I've done it in elevators. I've even done it at traffic lights, waiting for the light to change. So it's very, very simple. Anybody would like to contact me directly, my website is www.thehumanmri.com. It's thehumanmri.com. Or they can email me at thehumanmri at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to send a copy of this. I have other meditations as well that if anyone wants to contact me through my website, The Human MRI, go to the contact page, and I will send them a meditation on abundance. Mm. We can all use that. (laughs) Well, I want to thank you so much, Justin, for being here today. And I know that the listeners just are feeling better physically than they were before the top of the hour. So (laughs) I just want to say thank you again. And listeners, if you um, have any comments or questions, please feel free to email me at angeloblaha005 at gmail.com. And um, next week, we will be talking with the mothers. So you have a chance to call in and ask questions or you can email. So um, until then, have a great week. And again, thank you so much, Justin, for being here today. My great honor. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for tuning into this week's edition of Conscious Conversations. Be sure to join Angela Blaha for another edition next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. Until our next meeting, have an extraordinary week.